Hello, my name is Beth Wyman, founder of the Inland Lake Yachting Association. I'd like to welcome ILYA viewers and guests. This project was made possible by an education grant from the ILYA Foundation and support from Sales Inc. I'd like to welcome our guest tonight, Will Hurth, the moderator for this evening, Malcolm Lamphere, Kate Cox, RJ Porter, and Christian Spencer. All of our panelists have extensive sailing experience and accomplishments. Tonight, they'd like to tell you more about themselves, their college sailing experiences, the boats they've sailed, and all of the regatta formats and stories that they can remember. For those of you that are exploring college sailing, you will really benefit from this webinar. Visit ilya.org or salesing.com to view it again and again. So on with the show. Take it away, Will. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us, guys. This is the first episode of Shooting the Breeze with Bill. I'm Will Hurd. I'm going to be the moderator for the evening, and I'm accompanied by a great group of people. You guys know these people, familiar faces of the ILYA, familiar faces of sailing and college sailing especially. Now, today we have a really special guests. Malcolm Lamphere from Yale, a college finalist, sportsman of the year, a single-handed national champion, and team race national champion. Now, also, we have R.J. Porter, College of Charleston grad, been a part of a team that's been a part of four national championships. While at Charleston, R.J. also was a match race, uh, been at three match race events, nationals, and then Christian Spencer. Now, I got a chance to sail with Christian Spencer at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. You guys know him as the coach of Pewaukee. He's also coached at Pine, and now he's at Geneva. Christian, thanks for joining us. And Kate Cox, all the way from White Bear. She's tuning in from Minnesota. How are you, Kate? I'm good. How are you? Now, Kate just recently graduated from Hobart, William & Smith. Uh, she's been a part of a lot of women's nationals. Uh, she got third in 2018 with her team up there. And... Um, Guys, this is a special group. We're all good friends. We've coached together. We've sailed together. I mean, I've sailed with every single one of you. And the reason why I wanted to create this webinar was to educate those Midwest sailors coming from expo backgrounds, coming from high school sailing backgrounds that want to know what is college sailing. Do they have the time commitment? Do they want to get into it? There are varsity programs. There are club programs. There are student run programs. And we're going to kind of dive into everything you need to know about sailing in college. Now, I'm going to let you guys also introduce yourself. I mean, if they don't know everyone, Malcolm, you start off, you know, tell them where you're from. What are you currently up to? Give me the rundown. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Malcolm, obviously. Uh, I'm from Lake Geneva, uh, living in Miami now. Um, my background in sailing is uh, mainly dinghies. Uh, 420s, uh, lasers, scows, uh, expos a little bit, opties. Um, so growing up, I sailed a lot of the same stuff that you guys did. Um, and just like looking back on my youth sailing days, like those are some of my most fun times sailing. Enjoy it. Um, so just a, uh, just a fun story about Malcolm Lamphere. This guy sailed in the GLSS. RJ, what year was it? He basically dusted off a boat from the barn. I think it was 2010, maybe 11. And yeah. dusted off a boat in the barn in Lake Geneva and went on and won a GLSS. Um, but he's a, he's a tremendous sailor. And we're going to shake it over to RJ. RJ, what are you currently up to doing? I mean, you coached for Geneva for numerous years with me. Um, you sailed at Charleston. You sailed with your dad. You're, you're, you're a great guy one of my best friends and tell the kids what you're up to. Yeah. Thanks, Will. And uh, obviously we've had the pleasure of sailing with each other for many years now. So it's great to be on the call with you. Um, but yeah, currently I'm here in Lake Geneva, you know, I can never leave this place. It's beautiful here, but um, you know, I, I first got into sailing here on Lake Geneva, selling all these beautiful Malgus boats we have, you know, we're pretty lucky. Um, and sailing X boats was definitely a big, one of the kind of that time where sailing really started to click for me and I decided that I really wanted to keep getting into sailing and keep getting better. Um, and that, you know, moved on from that and started sailing at the College of Charleston, which was just truly one of the best experiences in my sailing career. 
So Christian, I mean, we got to sail together as well. And just to remind the audience, like you guys know these familiar faces. You guys have seen them on the water yelling. You guys have seen them on the water racing. You've seen Christian Spencer sailing the V66 and the East Coast steer and A boats. Christian, you're going into your junior year at the University of Wisconsin. You competed for a nationals last year. You know, give me the rundown. You're coaching at Geneva this year. What's the program? You summed it up pretty well, Will. Uh, this summer, I'm coaching at Geneva. Tomorrow, we've got our first orientation day. And then we start coaching next week. Uh, sitting on the East Cow with my brother and my dad. We were just out practicing and uh, sailing on for Madison. Um, this spring got canceled, but looking forward to when we get on the water next. It's been a blast so far. Right. And Kate, Kate, we got to dice it up in 2013 up in Lake Winnebago. Northern Wisconsin on the big waves. Kate got second. I ended up winning. I don't know how, but we've known each other for quite some time. Kate graduated from Hobart last this spring, and she is going to be the director of White Bear Sailing School. Yeah, uh, thanks, Well, I'm glad we could take our uh, animosity off the water and make this happen. It's really great. I just graduated um, two weeks ago from Hobart. Sailed a lot on the women's team there. Um, and like RJ said, it was one of the best experiences of my life. So, yeah. So guys, we're here to, you know, educate youth sailing in the Iowa and kind of figure out what is college sailing? Do you want to get into it? You know, do you have the time to double major and sail on the side? Now, let's talk really quickly about recruiting. This is something that I wanted to go right into because I knew zero. Like you look at basketball, you look at like there's different types of film you can watch, whether you play football, basketball. With sailing, you don't really send a coach a film. You know, Malcolm, you went to Yale, uh, a pretty prestigious Ivy League school, and sailed there. Tell me about your recruiting experience. Um. My recruiting experience was mainly uh, me reaching out to the coaches uh, when I was, I think it was the summer of my sophomore year. Um, I basically just went on the website for the programs that I was interested in and um, found the coaches' emails there, then just shot them an email. Um, eventually, they got back to me, and um, from there, I coordinated visits with the school, uh, and those were awesome because I got to experience the school um, and some programs are pretty organized and like actually got like taken to practice and meet the coaches but other ones it was like uh, I basically just showed up there and uh, like talked to the coaches for five minutes and that was it uh, but it was cool um, you really get to experience um, what college sailing life is like uh, at that school and uh, it helps a lot deciding what you want to do yeah now for like, here's a quick story sideline. I mean, RJ and I did an athletic visit um, at the College of Charleston, and I knew nothing about it. RJ's like, I'm thinking about going to Charleston. Like, you should check out the school. They have an excellent sailing program. I knew nothing. I sailed exports for four years. You know, did some crewing in the IOIA. Stepped in a 420 maybe three times, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. So. I basically wrote a sailing resume of some of the accolades I've been a part of, some of the winning teams I've been a part of, and I just sent it over to the coach. RJ did the same thing. And um, Greg Fisher, who used to be the director at College of Charleston before Kevin Jewett, shot us an email back saying, hey, you know, come on down, find a weekend uh, or a Friday and, and let's get you in the mix. So basically, RJ and I flew down with my mom. I think it was like a Thursday night. Um, we, got to go to, we got to go to classes with, I think, who was it we go to classes with, RJ? Christoph Killian, I remember. He was a guy who was on the team at that time. Math Race National Champ, actually. He was a really good sailor. <laughs> I had no idea at the time. I just thought we were going to school with Rev <laughs> Everett's Joe. Um, meanwhile, we were going to the Match Race Champion. And uh, after visiting the tour of the campus, like he showed us around, showed us the freshman dorms, um, we got to go see the athletic facilities. Now at Charleston, I mean, give us the rundown, RJ. I mean, you guys have pretty nice stuff. Yeah, so uh, athletic facilities. Um, one of the great things about Charleston too is that we were like 
considered a varsity sport there. Um, so with that came many perks. Like we had a great workout facility where we'd have workouts twice a week. You know, it was the same gym that the basketball team was using um, and all that. So we had great equipment like that, as well as, you know, a- academic help at College of Charleston. Being on that team, it really opened the door to having great advisors, as well as like your freshman year, they actually particularly, they'll make you go to study hall during the week for your first year to make sure you maintain at least a certain GPA. And I think that was something that was super helpful for the whole team. It makes them stay on top of their academics, makes work come first, and gives us more time when we're out on the water not to be worrying about our schoolwork all the time. So when we were there, RJ didn't get to mention, we got to go sail on a J-111. They technically yeah. were – I guess I don't know if they were. we were allowed to – I don't think they had an FJ or 420 for us to sail together. We're also we're pretty big. So um, the, the offshore team, which we're going to talk about a little bit later – um, they have an offshore team at Charleston. Uh, we got to sail on a J-111, and uh, I was the squirrel who takes the shoot down into the cockpit, and uh, RJ was doing, like, what were you doing, RJ? Like, doing math. I was math. doing math. So RJ was running the halyards, and it was, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, that was my first college, you know, tour that I went on. Did you do anything else? Mm-hmm. No, but I, I just remember being on that J-111 with you and then telling us to be, you were the squirrel and I'm doing math. And we looked at each other like, what does that even mean? Like, it was just a total different world of sailing that we had never been in before. But, you know, we were able to use our sailing knowledge and figure it out pretty quick with their help. So it was a great experience. It's just like the shoe launch on an e-boat, except you're the guy in the hole just yeah. doing this randomly. <laughs> uh, exactly. But yeah, so... I mean, those are two varsity experiences, and, and there's different routes to get into different college sailing, but I kind of want to throw it over to Christian. I mean, Christian, you dabbled with going to a lot of different schools, and you decided to stay in the, you know, the Midwest. Um, kind of break down that for us. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, Malcolm, I was a little um, unknown of, like, what the whole recruiting process was, so I didn't really – um actually partake in it and uh you know I looked at some schools and like knew which ones I thought would kind of match up with my major and uh like the sailing that I wanted to do in college so I looked at the east coast a little bit um but what ultimately brought me back to staying in state was just the fact that Wisconsin's a really um good school um they had an awesome business school which is what I study and uh also a pretty good sailing team too, um, with a lot of kids that I already knew um, from the IOA. There's a bunch of sailors, you know, Will was on the team um, when I joined and so many other people that you grow up sailing against um, on the same team as you, which is really fun just because, you know, you might see them at the inland or other regattas that you go to, but, you know, you don't get to hang out with them all the time um, like you do in college. Yeah. Oh, Kate, actually, Okay, we, I don't know if you guys saw the QA. Kate's mother just chimed in. I love Emily Cox. Shout out Emily Cox. Kate, what's the intensity level of practices, regattas, and kind of how do you compare it to your high school experience? You got to sail for about a meat eye, right? White Bear, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, White Bear High School. And she traveled around the Midwest and did the whole high school sailing circuit. Same with, you know, Malcolm. Same with RJ. Same with Christian. I didn't really do it. But let's unpack that a little bit. I mean, high school sailing is completely different type of schedule from college sailing. I mean, it's similar layout, but, you know, let, let's dive into that. Um, yeah, I think one experience I had that maybe others didn't have was at White Bear. Um, our team would have kind of a plethora of different skill levels with people on the team. You know, you would have beginners and – intermediate sailors and everything like that and um you're never really maybe working with the same person every practice in high school different crews um but then when you get to college that kind of changes and um the level of intensity does go up I mean it depends on what team you go to I think but um for Hobart it um was pretty intense which is what I was looking for in a school and pretty competitive so I liked that a lot yeah Malcolm, what were a couple of other places you looked at besides for Yale and what brought you back to Yale? Yeah, so um, 
I basically knew that I wanted to sail on the, the East Coast just for the pure reason that everything there is so close together. Um, and I knew that college sailing was a huge time commitment. Um, and I figured like if I could minimize travel in that whole process, then I could spend as much time as possible sailing. And then the other time I could focus on just having a great like overall college experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like really what made me want to uh, do college sailing on the East Coast. So I looked at um, Dartmouth, uh, Yale, uh, Georgetown, Harvard, uh, Boston College. Um, I think Sounds a like of some really, schools. really, really, really bad schools education wise. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Christian said earlier, um, I, I really like prioritize education in the whole experience. Yeah, like I, I was excited about college sailing and I wanted to uh, sail as much as possible in college because I love sailing and uh, it's like a huge part of my life. But uh, I realized that it was also a, a great opportunity um, for me to kind of leverage my skills in something uh, pretty unrelated to academics, but um, at the same time, like uh, that schools care about a lot and um, you can use that to um, go somewhere that other kids might not be able to differentiate themselves with uh, their respective sports or clubs or whatever, but uh, schools that have sailing as a varsity program, they really care about that. And the recruitment is just as significant um, for football or basketball or um, really any other varsity sport Definitely. at those programs. And I think a lot of the, the MCSA teams in the Midwest, like Minnesota, Michigan State, Michigan, um, Wisconsin, I think a lot of those teams are lacking the recruiting aspect. And I don't know, did you guys ever have a coach come in high school to watch you sail? Um, no, I, I, I never ahead. had a coach come watch sail. I feel like what the coaches in college sailing do, at least from my experience, is they, they never, they don't, they're not flying out to watch you sail on regattas, no. but I think they are watching the results at some of those top regattas to watch see who did well in high school sailing just to see who's already got the skills to come into college sailing and keep move, progressing forward. Um, so I think that's really what they're looking at. And um, back to like not that point, like I had never even, I don't know, maybe it's different from Malcolm something, but I never had a coach reach out to me or anything about college sailing. It always started off with me reaching out to them and then give them giving me the tools to help get to that point of being on their team. Yeah, I mean, that you could be a great sailor. Like, I know some sailors from Europe or South America uh, who were incredible, like probably some of the best sailors in the world, but a college sailing coach is never going to find them. So I think being from the Midwest is kind of similar. You, need to, you really need to reach out to the coaches, send them emails. If they don't respond, try, try again if you really care about the school. And um, yeah, just keep, just keep pushing, like, sending an email that they don't respond to it's never going to hurt so yeah it's shooting your yeah. shot it's Chase the same dream. thing shooting the shot i mean it's the same thing what you us three are probably doing with work i mean you you just kind of shoot for shoot for the stars there's nothing wrong with sending an email somebody's way and they could look at it and be like yeah and people know that's the one thing i want to make this clear like guys people know the iowa like we have some of the best sailors in the United States that come out. I mean, look at guys that are doing like Olympic development programs. Look at like Robel Shea, look at Melgus Rowe, like look at Malcolm Lamphere, look at Andy Burdick. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, I mean, even, even RJ's old father, I mean, stud. I think he even took some time in the FJ. Um, we'll, we'll bring him on next week. But there's, people know about us in the Midwest. You just, you just gotta get your name out there. Um, and I, I just always wondered, so do you guys have recruitment chairs on your team? Well, that's, yes, we, yeah, you did Malcolm, you did at Yale. Yeah. Everybody. I, I'm sure most schools do because and that was a the, student, right? Like on the team. Yeah. So the coaches would obviously, the coaches for us would do most of the recruiting process yeah. to decide who they want to recruit. And all the like initial emails would go to the coaches, but that for us it was more uh, a coordination thing for making sure the recruits had a great experience when they came to Yale. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, we were, I mean, uh, we were elaborate on this this year together. So, so Christian you know, and I were co-recruitment chairs at my last year at Wisconsin. Christian, I, I passed the torch to, but we got to work alongside each other a little bit. Um, and we got to visit a bunch of different, like, high school events. So we went to – what was that Pewaukee regatta we went to? Or I went to the Pewaukee – the Dirty Waters. No, Musty Dusty Waters. Dusty Water. You were Musty coaching, waters? right? What's it called? Dusty Water. Dusty Waters, a high school event. Yeah. And um, I was coaching Matamidi. And I basically, you know, just gave a talk at the end and, you know, passed out some pamphlets and some stickers to spread the word. And I'm sure other teams do the same thing. So – taking advantage of, you know, talking with a college sailor and asking them, like, you know, what's your day-to-day like? And I think that's really interesting. So, well, I think uh, we've got a couple of questions in the Q&A. Should we? Yeah, let's take a little time to address them. I mean, we got Kyle Navin and uh, Colin Rowe really peppering, peppering, the, peppering us with some questions, kind of jonesing with us. Malcolm, are you trying to get Griffin Rolander's mustache going? That's something inside. Um, this is a good question I like to answer. Kyle Navin, what's travel like at various schools? Let's let's unpack that. I mean, Kate, you guys want to talk middle. about what it's like being from the Midwest? Sure. No, Kate, Kate's in New York too. I mean, Kate, you're in where's Hobart? Um, Hobart is in upstate New York in a town called Geneva, right on Seneca Lake, one of the Finger Lakes. Um and pretty much every regatta we travel to is on average like five hours away within our conference. Um, our closest one is Cornell and the farthest we go, well, to nationals, wherever that is. And then within our conference is Old Dominion, which is like eight and a half. Um, so it's not that bad. It was something that, like Malcolm said, I looked into too. I wanted to be close to other places um in order to sail a lot so yeah hey does that eight hours of flight or is it a drive-in um well we usually drive but uh my coach is starting to hate that so we've started to fly to odu which is kind of nice um but like when we went to newport we for college nationals last year we drove um and then we were going to fly to Louisiana this year for nationals, which – You guys are going to fly to Louisiana? Yeah. It's a pretty mm-hmm. far drive. So let's yeah. bring this down back into terms, guys. Christian Spencer and I would drive in a minivan with wet clothing. I know it's not the best recruiting platform when I'm doing – trying to hype up the University of Wisconsin. But we would get in a minivan Thursday night and just send it. We'd probably get – a maybe a motel or a hotel in um, Cincinnati you know, Cincinnati Cleveland. area and keep driving to places like um, this fall Charleston. The Coast Guard and then to uh, Hobart as well. Hobart's a little shorter drive for us. It's like 13 hours, but yeah. Um, like last spring, Will and I, we went to New York and that was what, like a 20 hour drive, Will? Yeah, I bet those are fun memories. Like, yeah. as much as RJ and Kate and Malcolm, and they like to, you know, poo-poo that idea because they had the luxury of just driving 10 minutes away. Um, we, we, like, take pride in it. We're like, student-run program, um, you know, getting in the car with you guys after a Sunday of, you know, having some really tough races against some really good East Coast schools and having to drive all the way back Everyone's on their laptops getting a little bit of work done, but, you know, spirits are high. And, uh, I mean, those are some of the best memories for me. Should but, we um, should we kind of, like, bring that into the – talking about the difference between uh, club and varsity teams? Yeah. And maybe one thing to talk about would be, like, cost and expenses. Um, yeah, I'm not definitely. Sure, like, how, how, is that, how is that for you guys? Like, what was funded um, versus, like, what did the team members kind of have to pay for out of pocket? Christian, yeah. you take that one. You're on the board. I mean, yeah. You know. So, um, as a team, one of the big things that we do is we have a couple of fundraisers throughout the year. So it's not like we're paying out of pocket to buy, you know, a new fleet of 420s or a new dock. You know, we just got a new like four million dollar pier, um, and that was just through the university paid for. Um, but we do have to fundraise for nationals, and you know, last year Will and I went 
Um, we got some awesome sponsors, um, you know, around the, you know, area, Harkin, Line Honors, all of them were helping us out and we didn't have to pay for that at all. Um, but there are, you know, semester dues of right around like $125 um, and also going to regattas. So the more that you go to, it is still, you know, a really good price, about the same as what you'd pay to go to like a high school regatta um, of like $20 for a weekend. So I think that that's a pretty good deal for something that, you know, you're passionate about. You also do have to pay for your food. Um, but, you know, on a year, if you're going to probably like seven, eight regattas for the entire season, you're paying like maybe, what do you think, Will, $400, $500? Yeah, I mean, it get, it got pretty pricey um, for if you were very – not pricey, but – you know, you definitely are paying out of pocket a little bit, but it comes with the student run program. Um, mm-hmm. But just so you guys know, Wisconsin is in transition to become a club sport, so they will be getting somewhat of funding. Um, I don't yeah. know how much month money per semester or whatever it may be. But as far as like RJ, Kate, Malcolm, like tell us, we are completely oblivious. I mean, you guys have some of the best gear. You have some of the best vans that you pull up to at events. Um, you guys are decked out head to toe. I mean, you're, you're a sexy portrait of college sailing. Yeah. For, for us at the college of Charleston, it was, we were kind of in the middle. So we were, we were varsity sport there. Um, I don't know. I don't believe we got like a ton of funding from the school. So, you know, like Kevin Jew and Greg Fisher, they are doing a lot of fundraising, trying to get people to donate money to the college of Charleston. Um, but like as I was saying before, it still comes with a lot of perks being a varsity sport because you get all those academic resources, all the facilities at your disposure. Um, so that was the huge perk of being a varsity sport, just having access to all those different resources. Yeah. Same with you guys, Kate. I mean, Kate, you went to, I mean, you guys were Division three in the NCAA. In some sports, you guys are like D2 and D1 in lacrosse. Mm-hmm. But how many kids went to your school, Kate? Uh, my school is pretty small. I think we had, uh, I want to say, 1,200 kids in total. Um, wow. And, Super small. Yeah, <laughs> really small. Um, and my team was, I think, made up of like 30. We'd go between like 25 and 30 um, sailors. And we didn't have to do very much funding because we're a varsity sport there. Yeah. Um, the one thing we did do was we would do like a t-shirt fundraiser once a year just to help us pay for maybe some stuff on spring break. Um, and then we would participate in like, um, uh, like raise money things around campus, stuff like that, that all the other sports teams do. But for us, it wasn't something you really had to worry about. Um, like you may find on some other teams. Um, Malcolm, we're eager here. I mean, look at I mean, Al Hager coming in with a hot question. Uh, Dave Ullman said that one problem with college sailing is that the boats are pretty low performance. Was that a problem for you? And this is to everyone, not just Malcolm. He re- recommends that also finding some high performance boats to sail, i.e. Melgus 15, uh, personal branding there. That's a free advertisement for Melgus. Uh, were you able to do that in college? Like, let's unpack that. I mean, these are 420s and FJs. They've been around forever. So, um, short answer, the uh, boats in college sailing are very low performance and very slow. Yeah. Uh, But I would not say that that is an overall problem at all. Um, High performance sailing is great, and it's a huge part of Olympic sailing um, and a lot of sailing you do later in life. But – at the same time, high performance sailing comes with a lot of problems. One, it's extremely expensive. So um, it limits opportunities for many people or schools that wouldn't be able to participate if it were high performance boats. So what slow college sailing boats do is it gives every single person the opportunity to compete. To which, dance. Which really just levels the playing field. College sailing was some of the most competitive sailing I ever did. There were, I did tons of youth sailing growing up as a kid, but then when I got to college, 
there were so many kids I had never heard of before, never seen before at regattas, <laughs> and they were filthy. They were so yeah. good. Yeah. And like growing up, like in my small little world of sailing, I thought like I knew everybody that was good and I understood, but college sailing, slow boats are, are great for the competitive aspect. But I mean, to, to go off that, X boats are slow boats too. I mean, majority of us did X boats. I mean, Malcolm, you did a little bit. You did more lasers and 420 sailing. I mean, you sailed for Lake Forest. Um, RJ sailed for Loyola in Chicago. Christian, you sailed for Kettle Moraine. Yep. Yes. And um, I sailed for Bigfoot Badger. Thank you. And uh, like the X boat, would you say there's some transferable skills from high performance background, crewing on scows, crewing on boats like e scows? I mean, the other day I was talking to Jim Peterson, Chapman Peterson's dad, and he said that coaches were coming up to him basically saying, this kid's got so much feel. Like, he knows how to vang sheet. He knows how to pull on Cunningham. He knows, knows how to power up in the big breeze. He knows how to, you know, depower. And all these little tweaks that he knows to do with his sail trim and all this stuff. Jim Peterson looked at the guy. He says, sail on the Sea Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you think about that? <laughs> like, can you sail in college with an expo background? Yes or no? That's that's what I'm asking. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, like Malcolm was saying, they they are they're low performance boats, but there's on every boat you sail, there's always going to be minor tweaks that you can make, um, as well as the feel you have and the way you sail the boat that's going to make it go faster, whether it's a high performance boat or a um, low performance boat, an X boat. Um, I would consider it to be a, maybe it's a lower performance boat because it's not moving as fast. But when you think about it, like there's more controls on an X boat than there are in any of the boats we sell in college. Um, and if you can figure out how to master all those controls in an X boat, you're going to be able to know what every control does in the boats we're sailing in, in college sailing. And beyond. Even and after. beyond for sure. Yeah. So I mean, I think we, we kind of summed up that. Do you ever think that college sailing will turn the page on 420s, FJs? I, I think Not it will always be, be a, similar, a similar boat, two-person boat, uh, that very much focuses on, on boat handling and uh, like short course sailing. So something similar. So – I think the next topic we want to get into, guys, is – actually, I got a good question from Connor Peck. Connor, thanks for tuning in. Um, Connor Peck is a local sailor out of Geneva. I think he steers an expo now. Um, yep. I used to coach him in Opti's. Christian, does he steer an expo? Yeah, I won two, three. I won two, three. Max Six is old boat. Shout out, Max Six. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Mac, if you're tuning in, welcome. He asked a quick, good question. Are there s scholarships – in sailing i didn't receive a scholarship christian did you receive a scholarship no not at all um we've got like an advisor um who can write a letter um if you're really interested and you think you might be on the bubble of getting into madison um but no um there's no scholarships at madison but across college sailing there also isn't rj anything no, definitely no scholarship. Uh, I mean, I don't, I believe it's actually not allowed to actually give out a scholarship for college sailing. Um, but like I said, if you reach out to the coach, they will give you the resources and they'll be able to help you out, try and get you into that school and give you the kind of resources and let you know what it takes to get into that school as well as be on the sailing team. Kate, your brother went to Hobart. Um, shout out your brother, Eddie Cox. I got a chance to sail with him at the invite in 2019. Um, and you, um, but what about that? I mean, the fact that he went to Hobart, do you think you had somewhat of an in there? Do you think the coach kind of knew you, um, having that lineage? Um, I think it was definitely a pretty big influence on my decision. Um, Eddie has affected every part of my sailing. He was my coach growing up and he started sailing before me and I don't know. I've looked up to him a lot, so I think uh, choosing Hobart, that was part of it. And then also, I really 
mostly chose it because of the school there and the size. I liked how small it was and the biggest class size you have is like 20 kids and you know your advisors personally and everything like that. So um, I think it was just a combination of both. And then Eddie gave me insight into what the team was actually like. So yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of cool because then now we were both on kind of the same team and had the same teammates. So we have similar friends now and and everything, which is uh, pretty special. So, yeah. Now the big question mark is up in the right-hand corner, Malcolm Lanfear. Can you hear me? Big question? What am I missing here? No, no. Did you have any, you know, help getting into Yale or did you reach out to any coaches? that you could say, hey, like, you know, get me into the school or, you know, I know you had the grades, trust me. You come from a very, very, very bright family. But did you ever reach out to somebody and thought that uh, maybe I not got, might not get in? Yeah, so um, I actually did with, with Harvard. I reached out to them and um, there were, I sent a lot of emails back and forth to the coach. Like he was, originally he said like, maybe we can get you in. Yeah. Um, maybe um, your grades or your scores aren't good enough and um, like we're just not sure um, and after a while I just decided uh, like the coach that I was talking to at Yale uh, was like basically certain um, that I was going to get accepted if I applied uh, early decision and that's another important thing about recruiting um, different schools have different uh, recruitment processes um, so like, for example, some schools only do recruiting for regular decision, which is, seems very strange to me. Yeah. I think that's, uh, the case with like Georgetown and, um, I just know that because I looked at them, but most schools do recruiting only for early decision. Um, so for that reason, it's really important to reach out to the coaches as early as possible. Um, generally I would say like early in your junior year or summer of your sophomore year. It's, uh, it's great to start just shooting them emails. Uh, hopefully you get responses and then uh, you can do visits uh, maybe the next summer, like summer of your junior year or spring of your junior year. Um, but the, the college selling coaches can help you through the admissions process. They can get you into the school, maybe get you over the hump um, for academics, but they cannot like give you money uh, to pay yeah. for school. Yeah. And I, 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 that's kind of what I heard from through the grapevine is, you know, they will help certain students get in um, and, and they will really push for, you know, a top notch sale to get in their program. That as was they should. With me with the early decision too. Um, I had the same thing, had to apply early decision. And then Scott, my coach helped me through the admissions process and everything for recruitment. So let's do, let's get, let's dive right into the format of college sailing. We talked a lot about recruiting. We've talked a lot about different teams, student run teams versus varsity teams, um, different sizes. Um, we talked a little bit about funding, scholarships. Um, let's dive into, I kind of want to start with time commitment um, and practice schedules. Now, from the outside looking in when I was, you know, first applying to schools, thinking about college sailing, I didn't go the college sailing route. I went to DePaul University for two years. Absolutely hated it. Um, you know, I wanted to do something more than just, you know, reading a book. And I, I just wanted more. I did some intramurals, but I, I wanted to college sail. So I threw an application to Wisconsin, uh, reached out to the coach, uh, and the rest is history. But as far as, you know, the time commitment with studies versus practices for regattas, um, I kind of want to start with, you know, Christian, just being from the MCSA, you know, Christian, you and I got the chance to sail together. We're on a student run team. Joe Kuchenreiter is our coach from East Troy, Wisconsin, like you. And what we coach, we practice three to four times a week, at yep. least two. Yep. At least two. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yep. You're the practice captain now, right, Christian? Correct. Yeah. So at Madison, we still sail four days a week, which I feel like is pretty typical um, for a lot yeah, of schools. I agree. But because we're a club team, it's not, you know, mandatory um, that you go to all practices. Um, obviously, our more competitive people are there 
four days a week, every day trying to get better. Um, but, you know, some people only come two days a week. We've got practice from 2.30 to 6 around the water for, you know, roughly like two and a half hours every day. Um, and, you know, we're training as hard as we can. You typically want to schedule your classes earlier in college, um, which kind of sucks, you know, getting up for an 8 a.m. or something. But um, having those done before, you know, your sailing starts is really nice because, you know, we all do college sailing because we love it and we want to have that time in our afternoon to be able to go out and sailing. So, you know, if you do high school sailing, it's pretty similar. If you get done with school, you get a little bit of studying in and then you go to practice um, after that. Um, after practice is over on Tuesdays, we have um, a board meeting where uh, like our board of uh, everyone who kind of helps run the team has a meeting. And then Thursday nights, we also have a meeting. Um, so it's a lot of, you know, a lot of time in the season dedicated to sailing. Um, and then you got to time manage and like afterwards go to the library for a little bit and study too. Yeah, definitely. So as far as you guys, you varsity folk, um, kind of, it sounds like you guys practice, what, three to four times a week. And it's, you guys have a lot of volume. I mean, every sailor on your team is solid top to bottom. It's basically a regatta every practice from what I've heard, you know, unpack that a little bit. You guys have what, 16 boats on the water, each one of you guys, at least? RJ? Yeah. Yeah, I'll throw. Um, yeah, RJ, yeah, RJ, RJ had, you had a huge team. We had a big team, you know. We had not just our dinghy team, we also had our offshore team. But um, every practice, we pretty much had 18 boats on the water, on the starting line. Um, you know, we had our days where we'd be drilling, but most of our practices were, you know, just our, all 18 boats getting on the water and racing against each other and everyone just pushing each other to get, to get better. better. Um, but yeah, we sailed three days a week, um, sometimes four, depending on what travel looked like. Um, and the one thing I'll say, you know, about the time commitment is it is, you know, you're spending a lot of time sailing. We had workouts um, as well as coming from a team that had a lot of good sailors. Um, you know, you're not going to travel every weekend. Uh, so there is that kind of main squad that's going to be traveling every weekend. Um, and I kind of love being able to not have to travel every weekend where I could go to practice still get that racing experience of sailing against a ton of good people, but then still have my weekends in Charleston to go over schoolwork and that kind of stuff. Um, so it was a great balance for me, but I know for the, those people who are traveling every weekend, it is a huge time commitment. And I'm sure, you know, Malcolm and Kate can both attest to, they are probably as soon as they get out of class on Friday, hopping in a van or somewhere, going to that regatta, sailing all day for two days straight, coming back and diving right back into their schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Kate, Malcolm, any comments? Um, yeah, so my team was a little bit smaller than Charleston was, and so typically we would have, I want to say like 15 boats on the water, like max, um, and we usually just do drills the whole entire time. We break off into groups of five and do um, drills separately, and then we come together as a group and do you know, whatever we're working on that week, whether it be team racing or fleet racing or whatnot. Um, yeah, and I would travel, I think, almost every weekend in the fall and spring up until um, the end of the season, which in the fall, they've now changed it. It's now, I think, like, it was like the week before Halloween, maybe, and then the spring is up until the Nationals, which is in June. Um, which I did like a lot, but um, it does get to be overwhelming sometimes, and sometimes you don't have time to catch your breath. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for us, it was quite unique. Um, we're one of the top programs in the country in terms of results-wise, but we're very unique from a lot of other schools. Like College of Charleston, I know, had tryouts to be on the team but True. there actually weren't we don't have that many recruiting spots there were generally like two or three recruiting spots per year so um in terms of like recruited sailors on the Yale team there were only like eight or ten at a time uh so then to fill a lot of the other spots 
it was actually walk-ons. So we would have like some of the top kids I've ever sailed against in my life, like Ian Barrows sailing against a kid in practice who it was his first day sailing a boat. <laughs> and um, it was like incredible. And I think that's really unique um, for Yale. Um, but one thing that it shows is uh, some programs, you don't even have to get recruited to participate in college sailing. Um, we talked a lot about recruitment, but um, a lot of colleges allow walk-ons and uh, encourage and need walk-ons for their programs to survive. Um, I think I can't even talk about how many kids we had walk on to the team at Yale that ended up being a crucial part of winning nationals as crews, whether they were uh, like heavy air crews or even sometimes like light or medium air crews. Um, yeah. My crew throughout college sailing walked onto the team um, and had done a little bit of summer sailing in Sunfish before college. That's awesome. And um, she was really small and I was really big. So we kind of balanced each other out and uh, where it worked well in college sailing. And um, she ended up winning like three national championships. And now people ask her to crew for her um, in like regattas post-college. So she's known as being like a phenomenal crew. Um, so I think getting recruited and your experience before college sailing is important, but just know that uh, anyone can participate in college sailing uh, and it can really open the door for a lot of opportunities uh, in for sailing later in life. Yeah, definitely. And that going said, like back to your point of there are so many club teams and some varsity teams that, you know, will allow a certain amount of volume. I know RJ, you guys have like a JV or a club team, don't you? Yeah, we do have a club team as well. I mean, how many people are on your sailing team? Like, close to 80 right isn't it something just absurd yes yeah so like we have a i would say about like 40 people on our dinghy team then we have our offshore team which has another 20 to 30 people and then that club team probably has uh, at least you know like 15 to 20 people on it so yeah exactly i mean for wisconsin we have open tryouts as well as well and it can get hairy but you know you get some guys that come out with just like you said, sailing some sunfish is recreational, you know, crewed on an expo twice, um, maybe did some opties, um, you know, come from minimal sailing backgrounds that become, we had one, Jen Burke, who didn't have like a big background and became an all-American crew um, with, uh, I think it was George Kuchenreiter. Um, but, uh, you know, those are the type of stories that you'd love to hear. So let's go really quickly. Well, let's just run down the format. Um, and I'm going to let everyone who's kind of specialized in this talk. So let's really quickly, there's a bunch of different formats in college sailing. There's women's sailing. Uh, there's a bunch of women's events. There's a women's national championship. Women's regatta, two women sail on the same boat, usually an FJ or a 420. Then there's single-handed sailing. That's lasers. That's Malcolm uh, down there in the, in the middle screen. Um, as well as team racing. Malcolm was a uh, team race national champion uh, with his buddy Ian Barrows and a couple of other uh, really, really talented uh, yachtsmen and women. And then um, you get into match racing. And that's where RJ Porter uh, has really, you know, excelled in his uh, college sailing experience. Um, I dabbled as well in my last uh, year and we got to go to a national championship in uh, Massachusetts. Um, and then you get into co-ed. So basically what co-ed is, is um, an A and a B series of, uh, you know, it could be a guy and a guy sailing together in a 420. It could be a guy and a, and a girl. It could be a girl skipping. It could be whoever you want it to be, an A team and a B team. And uh, we'll unpack that in a little bit. But that's co-ed. Um, and uh, then something that we've said a bunch, which I think really I want to hit on later on, and I'll say it at the end, is you can sail offshore keel boats in college if you are you know some of these really really good dinghy sailors not all i mean Steph, stefano from charleston is a pretty big guy malcolm is a pretty big guy phenomenal dinghy sailor rj is a pretty big guy phenomenal dinghy sailor christian's five foot four phenomenal dinghy sailor kate's small so not saying that's the mold 
but there are, you know, people that come in, like they go to Charleston and they have a great offshore program. We're trying to build ours as Wisconsin. I know Yale, I saw them at a couple offshore events where they throw, throw a bunch of dinghy guys on an offshore boat. Hobart, you guys have just a match racing team. But um, yeah, so let's really quickly, let's all go around the horn. I'm going to let Kate talk about women's um, and then Malcolm's going to talk about the same hand. Nice and so on. Um, yeah, so I sailed majority of college sailing. And a few, but I did three maybe. Um, so yeah, like Will said, women's sailing, when you go to regatta, it's all women's college sailors, your crews. Um, yeah, racing at the moment. They're trying to start a uh, women's food racing, and it hasn't really caught in my conference. Malcolm, stop typing. <laughs> oh my God, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're straight. <laughs> Guys, these are technical difficulties. We're going to figure it out. Once again, shooting the breeze with Bill. Kate's talking about women's sailing. Kate, regroup. All right, I'll regroup. Let me think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so in NISA, where Yale is where Malcolm sails out of, um, the conference he sails out of, they are trying to start women's team racing a little bit. Um, and I think over the next coming years, it might catch some traction, which would be really cool to see. Um, I was supposed to sail in a women's team race this spring, but obviously that didn't happen because it got canceled. Um, but yeah, so I participated in three women's nationals national championships um which were awesome and really fun and the thing about women's versus co-ed is i think they're equally as competitive you're sailing against a lot of females that are also the a skippers on their um co-ed team and i think at the moment the amount of female um skippers doing both women's and co-ed is at co-ed, yeah. high which is really cool to see and um also them doing team race stuff uh is at an all-time high um so yeah and i mean we have great women sailors i mean erica reineke and nikki Barnes, and you know several you got and you got two guys dating two perennial sail women sailors rj right. dating yeah. paris hankin out of Charleston and Malcolm Lamphier with Louise Nordstrom from Yale. So there is relationships to be had in college sailing. It happens. That's one of our questions. I'm not sure if you saw it, but. Uh, Was it actually? From Colin Rowe. Yeah. Do you ever have a relationship with your crew? Is that the <laughs> No, that's not exactly the question, but. Uh... Let's, let's get to the questions at the end. Um, let's really quickly hand it over to RJ. or Let's go to Malcolm to talk about single-handed and team race. Malcolm, give us a brief overview. So single-handed sailing is a pretty small part of college sailing. Um, basically, you have the option to uh, sail lasers against other college people. But I think team racing is a huge part of college sailing that's really cool. Um, yes. And definitely my favorite part of college sailing 100%. as a whole. Um, it's awesome because you get to be on a team with six people all working towards the same goal. So basically, it's 3v3, three boats from your college versus three boats of another college. And you just go through a series of races um, and then cumulative record at the end. Like, let's say you go 13 and two, 13 wins, two losses. Uh, and the next best record is 12 and uh, three. Then you would win the regatta. Um, but it's just three votes versus three votes. Low score wins. Um, and it's awesome because you get to work with your teammates. Yell out um, plays. Yell out plays. Get fired up. Um, yeah. talk to the umpires. We got the umpires, the umpires in the mix. <laughs> it's awesome. It's really cool. That was something that I never experienced in college sailing, and I loved it. I mean, we would have some team race practices when I first got to Wisconsin. I was just aimlessly match racing some one boat, but you, like, figure out, like, the different combinations, the different plays. Uh, it's a really f super fun – I mean, I wish it was more in the IOA as well, but um, super it's fun facet of college sailing. It's great because there's a chemistry aspect and it's like uh, soccer or basketball where um, or volleyball where really knowing what your teammates are going to do ahead of time and being on the same page with them 
uh, is a huge help. So it's, it's a ton of fun. RJ, give us a brief um, – actually, let's go to Christian. Christian, you got a chance to compete. Is this – did you compete in nationals your freshman year? Yep. Yeah, so two nationals in the last two years, freshman, sophomore year. Um, one with Charlie Cooch and Ryder, you were the B skipper. And then in the la- this last year, you were the A skipper and Sam Bartell was the B. Um, tell us a little bit about that. I mean – coming into your freshman year, going right into a national championship with, uh, you know, wearing the W on your life jacket. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that, you know, co-ed sailing is um, also a really big part of college sailing. Um, similar to women's, um, just that guys can do it. So you'll have mixed crews, um, you know, some all guy boats, some all girl boats, some mixed. Um, but you try and jam pack like 18 races into one weekend um which you know is just constant racing and it takes Tactic. a whole bunch to reset and always stay in it um and that's like one of the big things um of the mental aspect of just being in it all the time yeah. um but you have one bad race it's it's you got to get back into it no there's so many out. races yeah um and there's no throw out being able to compete for nationals is super fun um that is one of the cool things about wisconsin of you know you might not be able to be on um, the top team your freshman year at some of the teams um, that are super competitive, but at Wisconsin, if you are a really good sailor coming from the Midwest, you've, you've always got a shot at being on the team. Um, And that was kind of what I felt coming into my freshman year. Um, And my class brought a bunch of energy, which was fun um, to it. And we had a blast, but it was cool to be able to compete against some of the really, you know, top tier teams in the country. And, hopefully keep working our way um, along the path. You know, we obviously missed out on this year, but hopefully we can keep improving for the next two. Awesome. Awesome. Now, RJ, match race guy. um, We never got to cross paths in match racing. I didn't make the team my junior year, but um, uh, I did four and a half years and I made it in the fall. (laughs) Malcolm, I'm looking at you. (laughs) And uh, RJ, you got to do it, I mean, two years or just your senior year? Uh, yeah, ju- I mean, just my senior year is the year that I went to nationals, but I still did match racing all four yeah. years there. Um, match racing, it was super fun in college sailing. It really opened uh, the door to a side of sailing that I'd never really seen before. Um, and, and for all of you, Matt, what match racing is, it's basically one-on-one. It's just, you know, we have about two boats, four people on each boat, and you're just going head-to-head battling it out for two laps around a race course and seeing who wins. And then similar to team racing, it's at the end if you have, you know, 13 wins, one loss. That's how you, you win the regatta. Um, so that was, you know, it's a great experience. And uh, you have to, you know, it's great because you have four people on your boat, on your team. You have to have one girl. Um, and I believe there's actually a weight limit for the whole boat as well. Yep. Um, so you got to stay under that weight limit and for those regattas, which includes fitness and that kind of stuff. Um, but it was great. I got to go out to uh, Long Beach, California for or actually Newport, California, my uh, senior year. For match race nationals um it was super light breeze that whole time but it was super fun got to sail some awesome boats uh the gut the boats they actually sail in the governor's cup um which is pretty cool or not the governor's cup but some other match race big match race we got out in california so uh you guys we've kind of touched on a lot of different facets i mean you can go into college sailing you can go sail lasers single hands you can go do women's events you can go sail match race events you can go do dinghy events in a 420 or an FJ and sail your buns off for 36 races in a weekend. Um, one thing that I think, like I said earlier, we're going to touch on real quick is offshore and keelboat events. That's something that I kind of did at Wisconsin. Christian knows. Um, champ. And uh, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. I got to go to a lot of cool venues. I got to sail in Rye, New York um, for uh, the uh, intercollegiate offshore regatta. Um, I steered uh, Kerr 11.3, just an absolute hog. <laughs> and then, um, and then I got to sail in the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Offshore Regatta in a tartan ten, guys. You know what a sonar is? Imagine that, but thirty feet longer and two times as slow. I think we went like our average speed in like a twenty knot day was like four point seven knots upwind, um, seven person boat. But yeah, you go to some of these places like Charleston where they have boats to sail on these big boats. I'm sure Yale does too. We have a bunch of big boats in Madison that you guys could pop on, J24s. Um, not Melgus 24s, but still transferable uh, 
symmetrical ceiling and asymmetrical ceiling. So um, I think that wraps it up, guys. Let's let's get into Q and A. I once again thanks everyone. Now is the time to rip some Q and As. We're gonna take about fifteen minutes. We're gonna rapidly answer these, and uh, we're gonna get you guys off to dinner, so um, or to bed. So really quickly, let's let's find some good ones here. I got a question for from Pound Row RJ. Really quickly, what's your what's been your inspiration in two sentences? <laughs> Um, Two sentences. My great. Um, <laughs> Come on. Lake Geneva's Lake Geneva's history of sailing and my family's sailing history. Yes, amazing. Kate, do you have pre-race superstitions? Um, you convinced helps you win the races. Um, I eat a bowl of oatmeal every morning for breakfast. So. Actually. Yeah, and uh, half a banana with peanut butter. So, <laughs> yeah. Breakfast of champions. Um, here's a fun one. Jay Ruff. Jay, how are you today? I don't know who you are, but um, do the regattas typically have social gatherings um, after events? Uh, sometimes. What are we going to say about that, guys? Uh, New, New England wouldn't have them after regattas, but um... – Sometimes uh, events? There, there would be Facebook groups scheduled for meetups in the middle of the week. Um, Fun. And that was awesome because you got to meet college sailors from yeah. all over your area. Uh, and I think they were that's the best always part about it. Yeah, go into some of these regattas and creating relationships. I know some people like take pennies off and share them, kind of like jersey swaps or, you know, they trade apparel or, you know, say, you know, hey, come to Geneva and let's sail a sea boat downwind on the rum line with John Porter and putting the leech cord on, stuff like that. So, yeah. sort of fun. Um, uh, Emily Cox, women's team versus co-ed. We, we kind of talked about that. Let's, let's just miss that one. Um, can, we, can we answer uh, Sophie's question? Yes, 100%. Sophie uh, Neiman. She um, is for – I coached her, Malcolm, at, uh, in Madison. Okay. Sophie, um, so there were – uh, a couple kids that practiced with us in high school. I went to I went to Lake Forest High School, uh, but there were a couple kids from schools around the area who didn't have programs, um, and so they basically just emailed our coach, uh, got in contact with him, or emailed someone they knew on the team. So basically, just find a program in your area. Uh, I'm not sure where you're from, Will. Where's she from? She's from Madison. She sails. They both are two opti sailors. Um, I'm blanking on their age, but they're awesome opti sailors out of Madison. They're on the Buddy Malgus race team. And, okay, so um, they sail in Mendota. When, so when you go to high school, uh, find the closest program to where you go that's already established. Uh, get in contact with their coach, and hopefully uh, they'll just let you practice with them. Competing might be a little complicated, uh, but you you can definitely practice um, with other schools, and that'll get you sailing four days a week um, in the college style boats. And um, I think there are regattas that you're allowed to compete uh, outside of your, your team, like JV type regattas. Yeah. There's a ton of regattas, at least three or four spring and fall. Um, even if you're not on a like organized team, you know, Will, that was kind of what Bigfoot did, right? Yeah, exactly. So you can pair up with almost any other high schooler um, and do those which are a bunch. Yeah, of there's a lot of mixed teams events. So, like, if you guys have small high schools nearby that might not have teams, I know, like, some in Lake Country, Pewaukee, they have some mixed teams up there. Yep. Um, I don't know about Minnesota, if you guys have some mixed teams. It's mixed, and some kids would um, come from, like, 40 minutes away to come sail with us. Yeah. But, you know, if you've already got two people on your team, it only takes two more to get a team started going to regatta, going every weekend. So we have another question. Tom Groskoff, all the way from Okachi Lake. Tom, thanks for uh, for tuning in. Tom, what's uh, what is your favorite venue to compete at? I think everyone kind of saw that in Scouse Lance, but let's go around the horn real quick. Name your favorite college venue to sail at. I'll start first. Okay. Uh, my favorite college venue to sail at was either Rye, New York, and that uh, – what is – Malcolm, you probably know what I'm talking about. You get Ameri to see New York City from there. American Yacht Club? Yeah, uh, American Yacht Club. one of the Maritimes. No. Yeah, no, American Yacht Club out of there. 
And then, okay. um, uh, I mean, Mendota, we would bike to our facilities. RJ. Yeah. Um, my favorite college sailing venue was definitely Charleston. It was a beautiful spot. We had dolphins coming by um, when we'd be practicing. And also, if you're at the right time of year, you've got a ski breeze every day where it's going the perfect 15. So it makes for a great practice. But one thing I will say is, Something you don't get to experience here in the Inland Lakes is current. And it, 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 if rough. you figure out what current is for the first time, it's going to confuse you, that's for sure. A lot of home field advantage at Charleston. That place is yeah. insane. We'll leave, we'll leave yeah. that talk to Robel Shea. Um, Kay Cox. Um, <laughs> we like sailing at um, St. Mary's College of Maryland. I like it there a lot. And I also like to win to Charleston. Um, venue. Uh, Mr. Lamphere. I like the, the Charles River, which is basically like sailing in a slightly bigger swimming pool. Um, <laughs> it was crazy shifty, uh, but it was fun. It was like you're racing uh, toy boats on like a little pond. It was really different kind of sailing, but fun to experience, super tactical. What about young Spencer? I love Mendota. I think it's got a really wide variety of conditions, um, which is cool. Um, and, you know, we're right on campus. So it's, you know, walk there from class, super close. But last year I had a bunch of fun at Newport. I thought that that was a fun venue. Yeah, and awesome. Cool place. Awesome. Here comes a good one. We got two questions left in the chat, one from Colin Rowe and uh, one from uh, Vladimir Kamputin. Um, what doors from Colin Rowe, what doors – has college sailing open for you? Um, whether that be landing a job, interview, form of new relationships um, in general, uh, how might its broad network offer benefits down the road? Maybe post-grad. I'll let, I mean. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll touch ahead. on that first. Um, the first thing I'll say about college sailing um, is it opens the door, not just for after college sailing, but it opens the doors for so much more sailing that's not even in college sailing. Like there's a lot of local regattas that we had in Charleston. Um, I sailed a lightning regatta, I sailed a viper regatta, and then I sailed, I sailed a lot of regattas that were outside college sailing. Um, but as well as being a part of a sailing, a varsity sports sailing team like that, um, it's a great thing to put on your resume, especially if you can work to be the captain of that team, that's another great thing to put on your resume. So, um, and you never know the people you're going to meet in college sailing. Um, so it, it can open the doors in so many, in so many ways. It's just all about you putting yourself out there and actually doing it, introducing yourself to all the new people um, that really gets the kick started. I mean, I landed a job based off of it. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, you know, I hung up the whistle. I hung up the life jacket and, uh, and I put the sunscreen away, even though I'm still wearing it on a Thursday night. And I am working for uh, – the Davenports, Mary Davenport out of Beulah, um, working with Ben Porter, Sea Scout legend out of Lake Beulah as well uh, for an IT staffing firm. And that's a relationship that, you know, I've had for, for a really long time. And um, it's something that I love about the IOYA is every single event. You're sitting down with people at a dinner table or you get to sail with all these really, really talented sailors and great like-minded people that you want to you know, spend your time with and be around. And a lot of it's, it comes down to role models too, I think. So that, that's my take. Christian? Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. It's all about just the relationships that you're able to make through um, any sailing, you know, through the inland or through college sailing and just using all those connections um, to help, you know, maybe land you a job someday. Um, we've been able to, you know, have other college sailors um, do a couple of Zoom calls for us during this, um, come and practice with us before, you know, like Will said, there's a lot of schools that help you, you know, find that next job um, once you graduate and once you're done coaching. Um, so I think it's awesome, you know, tons of lifelong friends because you're with them for so long and uh, just the memories that you're able to make and the bonds, like, you just want to keep that going. Like. It's crazy to think about that I've won a regatta with RJ in the Miller with 17. You know, I've got a chance to sail with Christian on an East Gow or crew and form on a 420. I got to sail with Malcolm on a, on a Milgus 24 uh, and other Scows. And, you know, I got to win the 2019 Eat Invite with Kay Cox. 
and I got to deuce it out with her in the expo. But Kate, how about your relationships with college sailing in the IOA? How, you know, you benefited from those? Um, well, I think everyone's kind of touched on it. I mean, it is your sailing network is, you know, just like a Life job working thing and yeah, lifelong. So I think it makes you meet so many different people and then sail with them later on in life in maybe a boat you've never sailed before or a venue you've never been at. Um, yeah. All right. Last question. Here we go. Unless Malcolm, you have a comment. No, but I think you guys covered it all. But last question, guys, Clifford Porter, RJ's cousin. If you could sail with anyone alive or dead, who would you sail with and why? We're going to make it. If you could sail with this person, should we put it into one boat or one class? Should we say an MC? Yeah. Or, I like MC. I like MC. <laughs> All right. Um, think about this question really quick, guys. I love this question. It's a great way to end it. Um, but basically, we're going to pick MC, Clifford. I know you're tuning in a lot. But uh, we're going to pick the MC. And the venue is Cedar Lake, Wisconsin. <laughs> Oh. So it's blowing dogs <laughs> off chains. Oh. It's super windy. Love that venue. You can sail with anyone you want. I'm gonna I pick this mine. Was any boat will. Oh, any if boat. you want, if, if you want, you can do any boat. I don't really care. I'm gonna pick an MC. All right. Mine's gonna be. I've always wanted to sail a sea boat with Peter Keck. Well, that's a really good one. That's yeah, a good one. I've been fortunate. It's a blast. Yeah, I've always wanted to sail with Peter Keck. I just think he's a Jones or he's a funny guy. I think it'd be a lot of fun. But my dead version would be um, uh, I don't know. Pass that one out. I'll think about it. Dead one's hard. Go ahead. Anyone else? Just go. Spit it random and we'll wrap right. it up. Well, if. If we're talking about Will was saying was sailing a, a sea boat on Cedar Lake when it's blowing twenty, I would take Shaquille O'Neal all day just to keep that thing flat up the breeze. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but, um, but if we're talking, you know, sailing, who I would really like to sail with, I've always wanted to sail with Bill Murray. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie that takes place up in Lake Winnipesaukee, where the, they got Bill Murray <laughs> tied to a mast <laughs> of a sailboat, um, and him just yelling out, "I'm sailing." Uh, it's made me want to sail with them ever since. What was that movie? Oh, oh my God, I'm going to lose it. What about Bob? 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 Kate, go ahead. Have you got one? Me? My turn? Yep, go ahead. I don't think I can top RJ's. Um, I don't know. I've never sailed with my mom before, so that could be... Actually? Yeah, no, so I think maybe that would be a good one. But I'd like for her to steer and me to crew for her. And say head up, head down. Watch the ticklers. It'd be, it'd be an MC um, duo on Lake Geneva when it's ripping like 35 knots. Awesome. Malcolm and Christian, wrap it up. What do uh, you got for me? I would love to get out there with Buddy Melgus and an ace gal. Uh, yes. I've had, the, I've had the pleasure. Heard countless stories from the man, but never got to experience uh, being on the water with him. Uh, I'm I've, I'd love to hear him just fired up. Just just wave him by. Just wave him by. Wave him by. <laughs> Christian, end it with a bang. Thing. I mean, I got to do the living legend, best of our area, Buddy Melgus on an A-Scout. I mean, winning the, in a, inland at 82 or something, like, that's crazy. Guys, guys, once again, thank you guys for joining me. RJ Porter, Kay Cox, Malcolm Lamphere, Christian Spencer, I want to give a huge thank you to the IOA for making this happen. Shooting the breeze with the first episode, College Sailing. Next week, we're going to be focusing on youth crewing. Um, special thanks also to Beth Wyman, Lee Allness, uh, Dave Bird, Candace Porter for making this all happen. Uh, Al Hager over at Sales Inc. But uh, this has been amazing, guys. Thanks. Tune, in, guys. tune in next week. Thanks for tuning in. It was in, really guys. fun and I really appreciated hearing all your great stories and uh, Look forward to more. That was an excellent format and uh, really appreciate everybody chiming in. Thanks to the ILYA uh, Foundation for helping us out and salesing.com. Uh, Check them out for all kinds of videos and pointers on all of our scows.
Thanks everybody for joining tonight, all of our participants. Great questions and uh, wonderful stories. Love it. See you on the water. See you on the water. <laughs>